Welcome to worship, everyone. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. It is the sixth Sunday of social distancing. This is the fifth Sunday that we've come to you online. We are glad that you are with us, whether you are joining us in our Zoom worship or watching on YouTube. We're glad that you're with us. I think we're ready to begin. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the bowls in our homes, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. Strengthen our faith that we may have life in Christ's name. 
Amen. The first lesson. But the first lesson is in the second chapter of Acts, beginning at the 14th verse. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to the, what I have to say to you. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy. <clears throat> and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark on, of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I'm not sure how many of our young people are gathered this way. It's a little bit hard to say, let's come together uh, in this time, but we're going to spend a few minutes just talking with, with our young people. We haven't, we miss you, and we haven't been able to have this kind of interaction with you in several weeks now. And so I'm hoping that wherever you are in your homes as you're adjusting to this new way of life in school, that you know we are still church together. So that's what I wanted to talk about for just a few moments, is how are we figuring our way to be church together? If you give me just a minute, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so that you can see me uh, a little bit better. And if you click on speaker view, then it brings up the view of whoever is speaking. But anyway, for our children that are gathered, at the beginning of worship this morning, we invited, we poured water into a bowl. And la through the past weeks, we've invited you also to have your own bowls at home. And so I'm wondering if through these weeks of worship, if you have set up a place in your home that could be like your church at home. Uh, for us, it's been our coffee table right here. I'm sitting on our couch and the coffee table is right behind the computer or else I would show it to you. But that's been our place where we have gathered things together to be worshiped together. So each time we've worshiped, we've lit a candle and put it on our coffee table. We have a cross that we have put on this table too. Last week, this table was covered with our Alleluia bells. In fact, I think one or two of them are still there. And we've created this as our sacred space for us as we are being church together from our homes. It's this place that reminds us that God is with us, even in this time. And so I would encourage you uh, to go through your homes, look around and see what are the things in your home that remind you of God's presence. They might be the usual things like a cross or a candle, but they might be something else. Perhaps you might find a photograph of a really wonderful time that you spent with your family. Perhaps it might be pictures of loved ones that you're not able to see uh, right now. And perhaps you might gather those things together as sacred places, sacred things that uh, remind you of God's presence in your home. We can't come together to be church in the building, but we can come together in our homes and through the blessing of technology, 
online, we can still gather in worship in this way. And so I invite you, the young people, to do that in this time to come. Consider how is God present in your home and what are some sacred things that you might want to gather. We're going to try to continue figuring out ways uh, to be together and to interact with you. So stay tuned for that. I know at 1045 this morning, our littlest ones, the preschoolers, are invited to join in uh, a special time of songs uh, and, and, and thinking about stories together. Uh, so look for that. But for our older kids, for our elementary school age kids, hang on. We are hoping to bring Sunday school back to you very soon. So thank you for being present today. And I'd like to offer a word of prayer for our young people. Will you pray with me? Oh God, bless the children. Bless all children throughout your world. Bless the children who are missing their teachers and their friends, their school routines. Bless the parents that are striving to work with them and provide some semblance of normal. Bless the children who are sick and who are hungry, the ones who do not have a place to call home. God, help us to remember the most vulnerable among us and to reach out to them and to provide for them the best that we know how, remembering that we are still your people even in this time of separation and isolation. So God, we pray for your blessing upon our children and all children of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. More than once lately, upon first waking up, I will be honest and tell you, I have wanted to pull the covers back up over my head, to close my eyes, and just imagine that things are different. Even though it's spring, my favorite season of all, and waking up to the sounds of the birds is a place of just sheer delight for me, more than once I have wanted to sink down, bury myself, and wish that everything and everyone would go away. I'm guessing that I'm not alone in these kinds of mornings of late. My first systematic theology professor in seminary used to say to his students that God is whatever it is that gets you out of bed in the morning. I found this a little bit puzzling, right? The idea that God is whatever gets us out of bed in the morning because for most of my life to that point, what had gotten me out of bed was first my mom and second, an annoying alarm clock coupled with a deep sense of duty to get to school, get to work, get going, you know, the usual. So this notion of God is whatever gets me out of bed in the morning seemed pretty strange to me. But as my life moved on and my family grew, I became a parent what got me out of bed in the morning also seemed to change. What got me out of bed in the morning was a new day, a sense of caring for those that I loved, and a sense of joy and anticipation in what the day held. It's, in essence, a hope for all that that new day might hold. I've always been a morning person, and some of you know that sunrise is my favorite part of the day. I love to see this transition from shadow to sunshine and to recognize with increasing clarity of vision all that comes with that transition. But more than once recently, I just want to ignore the new day. Stay in bed, close my eyes, make it all go away. Well, that's where I found a point of connection with today's gospel story. I think the disciples knew that feeling. Stay inside, lock the door, close your eyes, make it all go away. Jesus is gone and they are left with nothing but their fear and their guilt and their disappointment. They all fled. They didn't follow as Jesus called them to. Their fear kept them isolated and their grief threatened to overwhelm. They had lost the one thing that got them out of bed in the morning. It's into this scene that the resurrected one appears. Locked doors 
angry authorities, fearful friends, none of that can keep Jesus away. He comes to them, not with questions about what happened or demands that they try to do better next time, but with words that they have heard before. Peace be with you. Jesus had given them this peace just a few days earlier when they shared the Last Supper. When he was preparing them for what was about to happen, he said to them, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. These are the words that find us today. These are the words that have the power to get us out of bed, to keep us going amid all of the fear and uncertainty and grief that swirls around us. This peace that passes all understanding will keep the world going. Because it is the peace of a God that knows the depths of human sadness. It is the peace of God that knows death and despair and comes to us even still. It is the peace of resurrection. It is the peace that gives hope, hope to endure and to love even when everything is uncertain. It is peace for the world. And I recognize that as I say this to you, sitting on my couch, on Zoom, I have a computer sitting in front of me. There's food in my refrigerator. There's money in my bank account. I say this from a place of deep privilege. But I also know that that peace is there for those who have who, none of those things that I have sitting before me. And so it is a peace that transforms me, that, that calls me out from where I am to say how do I enter and turn towards this world that doesn't have nearly the privilege that I have? It is peace for the whole world. We can't move away from this story without saying something about our friend Thomas and this notion of faith and doubt, right? We hear this story every year, the Sunday after Easter. This peace of God, it's not about intellectual assent or belief. The peace of God is about feeling, not about being or believing. Thomas was not there when Jesus showed up that Easter evening. He didn't receive the same words of peace the other disciples received. And he doesn't go on to doubt. Instead, he says he just needs what everyone else already received. He needs that same peace. He needs that experience of God coming to him in his fear. Without it, he is left with only grief and sadness. His problem is not one of intellectual belief, it's one of experience, that the peace of the risen one has not yet found him. And so when a week later, Thomas is with the disciples, still once again behind those closed doors, he's watching and waiting for what is to come. Once again, there is no scolding or demanding. Jesus offers Thomas everything he desires, but Thomas no longer needs it. He doesn't need it. Instead, he makes a leap of faith and names what others have yet to name. That peace has transformed him and enabled him to say, my Lord and my God. Thomas has been renewed by this peace, this presence of the divine and everything now has changed. So as we are shut away in our homes, locked behind closed doors, with all of the fear and uncertainty and grief of this time, we know that God finds a way into this world still. We know that peace, which changes everything, can find us and all who are afraid. And that peace will get us out of bed each morning. That peace will strengthen us to do the work of God in the world still from our places of privilege. That peace will call us to do and to be things we cannot yet imagine. May that peace find you today and every day. Amen.
Let us now sing together our hymn of the day, this joyful Easter tide. You will see the, the text and the music will be printed on the screen. And I see technical difficulties. It is not letting me play the music to this. So we can sing it a cappella. I apologize for that. We had recording music recorded for this. So I will sing and I invite you to join me. This joyful Easter tide away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. At Christ, who once was slain, now burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Mother of souls from ill, my passing soul deliver. At Christ who once was slain, now first is three day prison. Our faith had been in vain. But now has Christ arisen, 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 We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of intercession. Let us pray this morning for the church, the world, and all people in need. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we pray this morning for all the families affected by the coronavirus in any way, either directly or indirectly. Let your living presence be with them. Comfort them in their hour of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we pray for all the families and single people forced to live in isolation for many weeks, unable to have any direct contact with other people. While it is understood that this is a necessary step to help control the spread of the virus, it is extremely difficult. 
Help them through this time of trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we pray for our nation and the world. As the number of cases start to decline, we are faced with a difficult decision of how to start to restore our normal way of life safely. We ask your guidance for our leaders and their advisors to help them work through these tough issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we pray for those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and all who care for them. Especially this morning, we pray for Lois, George, JC, Karen, Mel, Ellen, Nancy, Stephen, Elise, Colette, Jennifer, Lori, Susan, Diane, Neil, June, and Debbie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we pray that you will receive also those prayers spoken silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O God, who through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and in the community of the Holy Spirit, gives us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to unmute yourselves if you would like. It's sometimes nice to hear the cacophony of all of our voices praying these um, familiar words together. Our Father in heaven, 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 hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins. sins. As we forgive those who sin against, against us, save, save us from, from the time of trial, deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> We turn now to our offering. Obviously, we still cannot receive offering in the way that we were accustomed to by passing the plate around on Sunday morning worship. But we're church together even when we're forced to be our part. Our buildings are closed, but we are working harder than ever, supporting our ministry partners out in the world. We are making progress on our 2020 roadmap goals that we agreed to at the beginning of March and we're finding all kinds of new ways to stay connected. So we've come to you each of these weeks of online worship and told you the ways that you could continue to support Good Shepherd's Ministries. And on behalf of the church's leadership and both of its pastors, I want to say to you, thank you. You have heard our request to continue to be generous to your congregation, and we are tremendously grateful for the ways you have continued to support our ministries. You can continue to send your offerings in by check. That's probably the easiest way for us to process them. Please don't drop them off in person. Just stick them in the mail and they will get to us. You can go to our website and give online using a credit card or providing your bank accounts routing information. And if you have an iPhone, you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen and you will be taken immediately to Good Shepherd's online giving portal. Your financial support is essential as we continue to find new ways of being church in this strange new world in which we find ourselves. And again, hear me clearly, we are so grateful for your generosity over these past five weeks. thanksgiving what you have first given us ourselves our time and our possessions signs of your gracious love receive them for the sake of jesus christ your son our risen savior and lord amen
So we turn now to a time of announcements. I have several announcements to share with you. I think that we have screens to help you hear what I'm saying. So first, our next Emanuel Dining Room serving date is coming up. It will be Sunday, May 10th, which most of us will also celebrate as Mother's Day. The need for Emanuel Dining Room services is ever increasing, as you can imagine. And to make this service date work for us, we need four people to donate three pounds each of cooked ground beef. Um, the cooked beef can be left in the kitchen or you can contact Carrie or Karen Bittner to find further instructions on that. We need two people to come to church on Saturday, May the 9th to help prep the lasagna. And we will need one server who's able to go to Emmanuel Dining Room on Sunday, May the 10th after online worship to help serve the takeout lasagna. If you are willing to do any of those things, would you give Carrie, Carrie Kirkham or Karen Bittner a call to volunteer? Next, we have a really interesting opportunity. The Food Bank of Delaware has been doing mobile food pantries at locations throughout the state to try to alleviate some of the misery of people who are facing financial hardship in this time of no work. They are doing one of these mobile pantries tomorrow at the Christiana Mall parking lot. And there's an urgent need for volunteers who are able to help distribute that food. If you are able and interested to volunteer, would you contact me by noon today? We need to um, sign up through the local coordinator. So we're asked to be there at 8.30 in the morning. The food distribution will begin at 11 o'clock. Those two and a half hours are to get the service lines set up and everything staged so it's ready to go when the first people um, begin to arrive. I am planning to go and there's room for many, many volunteers. So if that's something that speaks to you, somehow reach me. You could chat me in the Zoom worship you could speak to me in the Zoom coffee hour. You could call me, email me, or text me. And finally, this Wednesday again, we will be doing our uh, drop-off donations to support our food pantry partner down at St. Stephen's. Someone will be out there between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock to receive non-perishable food items, personal care, and cleaning items. We have hit a total of 1,644 items over the last three Wednesdays. So what should our goal be? We should see if we could get 700 items this week. Let's see if we can do that. You know what? It's really awesome to stand out there and watch neighbors come up and unload their trunks. People are so grateful to have a tangible way to contribute to the welfare of our whole community. If you would like to be out there greeting our neighbors and our partners, contact Linda Omanis or Becca Galino. You will not regret the time that you spend out there. It's really gratifying to see that we're part of a large, generous community. I think those are all of the announcements that we have. We'll see what happens when the next slide comes up. Yes, it is. We will now turn to another hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Now receive these words of blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. It is sore. All right. All right. I'm Christ is risen just as he said. Walking together in Christ, we grow in faith and love to share Christ with the world. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Worship is over, I invite you to stay with us and we will begin our Zoom coffee hour shortly.